There is a prospect that is being mocked way too low right now, and his name is Amarius Mims, the Georgia right tackle, a guy that is underrated currently in my eyes, somebody that I view as a top 10 draft selection if he does declare. So let's get into the reasons why in this film study and scouting breakdown. So let's get into the film portion, and we're going to go through this game by game that Amarius Mims played this season, starting off with the UT Martin film. And, hey, I know it's a small school, but we still can learn a lot from Amarius Mims. As we go through some of these reps here, uh, you're going to see some things. First off, look at the NFL size. I mean, this guy is an absolute monster. You can tell he's already got an NFL build. He's so He's built so well throughout his frame, like thick. He's really thick. Obviously, he's got the length you look for. I don't think he's got, like, insane length, but I know he does have, like, a 7 seven and you know seven foot one inch wingspan or something like that that's wild and his hands are monster size from what i've heard he is a freak and he was a five-star prospect obviously but look at this man and that just shows you some of that ability here as we'll go back to this real quick and take a look but he gets beat here all right he oversets a little bit but look at the recover ability with that inside hand and it is a little high, but still, no, that's actually pretty good. It's fine. He, he does a good enough job there to recover. I mean, he is just so powerful of a human being at six foot seven, 340 pounds. And you're going to see him crushing down blocks in some reach blocks here later on, too, that are so impressive. Now, he does have an occasional lunge, right? And this was something we're going to see reoccurring with him, and I'll show you later on in this. Now, this is just not fair. Him and Brock Bowers working together. Also, Marius Mims is number 65. I'll try to keep pointing him out. He's the right tackle on Georgia. And he does do uh, he does play as number 77 later on in the season to honor his teammate. And I'll, I'll show you that as well. But you see him here. Just really solid power. So we're going to continue this. And well, he's got movement skills. He's got some explosiveness out of his stance. He's not the most flexible guy in space. He's not going to really be... He's not like the crazy athlete. He's not like Olu Fashanu level of athlete. He's really strong. Like, this guy's got immense strength, and we're going to continue to see that. But once again, I don't think he's the the crazy athlete that someone like Olu Vishanu is. He doesn't have those type of movement skills. He's not going to be that redirect. If you're redirecting in space, that's going to be a bit of a problem for him. But let's go into the Ball State tape now. And yeah, missing this block here a little bit allows free rushers at your quarterback. I don't know if that was just an assignment thing or what happened there. But now you just see his immense power, a little bit of uh, repositioning his hands. We'll take a look at this from the back view. First off, kick slide. Nice wide base here. Maintains the, the feet. And look at the length. He's got the leverage. The defender's not even on his chest at all. So he's won that battle completely there. Let's take a look here. Just immense power. Anchors down. That's an easy rep for Marius Mims. Here's some run blocks reps. And again, more power there. Combo. Let's see this one here as he's going to work and unfortunately miss. Again, there's another whiff. Let's just go back and take a look at this real quick. So sometimes, you know, hey, he's he knows he's more powerful than these guys, so he, he takes these these lunges a little bit, getting, uh, you know, not too bad there. That's just kind of a miss, actually, honestly. He, he kind of misjudges this guy's agility and speed to the inside and unfortunately gets beat a little bit there. Let's take a look at this one here. Nice little block here. Hands a little on the outside, not too bad overall. You see him working that reach block there. Nice, nice, really nice block here by Amarius Mims. I mean, look at this thing. This is exactly what you want. He gets to the inside shoulder. That is a great block. That's teaching tape block right there. Opens up a massive lane. Nice little juke move there, too, by the backer. Here's another one. Oh, yeah. Nice opening block there for the running back. Nice easy score. Yeah, you deserve to go and celebrate right there, Amarius Mims. That's a great block, allowing your... Uh, running back to score an easy touchdown here's some running blocks from south carolina game once again a little bit of a whiff that time he that time he definitely got on his toes a little bit as we'll go back to this so here he is right here and uh taking a look here just maybe allows the defender to control his chest a little push pull move gets off of him and uh knocks off knocks him off balance next rep here versus south carolina a little bit of a qb sneak here does a great job as we'll take a look at that again and uh creating a lot of push here to be able, see, look at this guy. He kind of wins on the inside on the center guard combo, but Amarius Mims comes in and really strikes him, delivers a nice blow for quarterback Carson Beck to get a first down there. So good on sneaks. Old Miss tape. Let's take a look. Some good pass rushers here. You know, Old Miss is, you know, they tend to have some speed off the edge, but Amarius Mims, you know, despite 
you know, maybe his feet are a little heavy at times. I don't think he's got that, like, elite agility either with his footwork and space, like the lateral agility. But, like, he's got enough athleticism, especially at his size, where he can get out in space and he can redirect block blockers to the edge, as we're going to see him here. Uh, let's take a look at this one. Misses his punch a little bit right there. Does enough to kind of get it out, but his quarterback kind of runs and saves him. That could have been a loss. And as we say, when we get to the next level, everybody's going to be stronger. They're going to be faster. So you do have to expect Mary's Mims. I think there could be a little bit of a problem versus speed at the next level. Let's see him on a little bit of a pull here. Kind of just misses, guys. There's what I was talking about earlier with him kind of redirecting in space. I don't think he's... And also be fair. This is coming off the injury, all right? This was week 11 for the Ole Miss game. And he was limping at times, I felt like, in this one. So I got to be fair and, and state that outright, that he probably was a little banged up in this game. See him crushing that power again. The dude is just a down-blocking machine. And here's a nice little reach block, opening a nice lane for your running back. Here's another power down block and just easy touchdown for your running back. You just, again, the power in his frame is undeniable. Look, just, yeah, not the greatest technique here or nothing like that, but he's just so strong that, you know, I mean, that wasn't, you know, that was also on your guard. That was more of a, uh, a Tate Ratledge highlight there. But still, I mean, the dude, he's just got crushing power to, to pull you out. Let's go on to the Tennessee tape now where he gets tested here in this one by some speed as well. You see him first rep here. From, uh, is this Tyler Barron? I don't can't quite recognize the number there, but Marius Mims doing a decent enough job to be able to recounter to the inside there. This one, oh, watch this. Boom, that's a kill shot, man. Oh, <laughs> and he gets back out to uh, stop out this, uh, any sort of stunt, man. This was, boom, just, <laughs> dude, that is, that's what I'm talking about, man. That's what I love to see. I mean, that's what you want to see from your offensive lineman. One of the best refs all season there from any offensive lineman you can ask for his hands were a little bit over there not not the greatest placement overall not too bad good independent hands right there stops the rusher inside on the plate let's take a look at this one here pretty simple again good good inside hand placement there let's see what he's got here gets a beat a little bit inside there kind of stops his feet a little bit nothing too crazy but yeah it kind of stops his feet could have kept on shuffling a little bit maybe again a little the heavy feet at times let's take a look at this one here now this is a clear beat let's take a look at this one again so starting out a little bit of an overset possibly leaving the inside a little bit because now you got this spot right here where this rusher can take advantage of you tries to threaten him with the outside speed redirects to the inside Amarius Mims goes for the punch misses and now he's opened up he's in a really bad positioning here and doesn't quite have the footwork to replace inside if the quarterback would have held that ball longer if Carson Beck would have said hey I'm gonna look around he would have gotten destroyed and maybe even have been a fumble who knows so that was the worst loss that I saw from Amarius Mims actually all season long let's see and this is also the game where he is playing as number 77 to honor his teammate uh here look at the power stoppage let's go back to that real quick and uh, there's that one lost rep, but watch this. Here's the blitzer. He's coming, the linebacker. Watch Amarius Mims. Boom! It just stops him in his tracks. I mean, he didn't go back at all. I mean, you see tackles or offensive linemen in general. Typically, I mean, look, I'm not saying this guy's a weakling because he's not. I mean, the amount of power that Amarius Mims has, he just stopped him stone cold in his tracks, which is just wild. And again, there's a little bit of that tightness potentially it's not too bad. He's got, an, again, he's got enough speed to be able to take rushers along the arc, which is what you need to be able to do. But when these rushers are going to counter to the inside, I think that could be a bit of a problem for Amarius Mims, especially as I talked about at the next level. Here's one. Doing a fine job there. Nothing too crazy on that rep. Again, we're showing that off. Let's take a look at some run blocking now, Amarius Mims. Ooh, nice, nice solid block there. Getting to the second level. See this one here as he's getting to the second level over here. Let's go back to that because I kind of lost track myself of where he was. Here he is. So let's see him kind of work up to the second level. Nice block here. Long enough. Falls down. But overall, good block there. Gets 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 to the target. This one, he was a little slow as we can take a look at this again. He was kind of a little bit slow to get. See, I thought, you know, he kind of hesitated right here. And he was like looking at his running back. And he's like, okay, I, I better get over here. And hesitates just long enough. And now his running back, Milton, gets hit. Here's a bit of a whiff right off the line. It happens, you know, solid enough there. And let's get into our final tape study. I'm not able to show the Alabama game because of copyright reasons. I know that one's kind of heavily investigated on, but there wasn't much. He got injured in that one, had to lead the game. Here we go. Georgia Tech. He put on a clinic in this game. I'll just fair warn you right now. 
Pass protection, solid as a rock, man. Nobody could penetrate Amarius Mims' forces in this one. Nice little countermeasures right there on that rep to make sure defenders were staying off of his chest. Now he does get a little bit of the right hand in his chest there, but so strong, man. Amarius Mims, let's take a look at this from the backside here. Uh, solid placement there with the right hand. Left hand looks good. Overall, clean rep win. Here's another one, inside shoulder plate. That's good positioning. Easy win for Marius Mims. There's some more outside. Maybe, you know, opened up a little bit earlier on that one if you're nitpicking, but not too bad. Uh, there it goes to the speed again. Now, this was a quick set, so to be fair, let's go back. And this just kind of shows some of that stuff. Is like sometimes, you know, he needs to open up his hips too often. And this is going to be more of a problem, especially when you get to the next level, is he has to open up his hips and kind of carry rushers more along a you know, uh, a horizontal plane, whereas, you know, can't go as vertical as much. He doesn't have the quite the foot speed. So he's opening up his hips a lot more. And that wasn't a loss rep. But at the same time, like I said, when you get into more look at Oh, I want to go back to this real well, we'll take a look at this again. But what I was saying is, you know, that's gonna be more of a problem in like deep horizontal sets at the next level when you have to pass protect for more than three seconds. That's, that's my big concern with some of Marius Mims footwork and, and overall speed is is can he do that at a high level like I know he's got immense power if you're trying to put, put power on this guy you might as well not even try like it's it's not a good idea anyway let's get on to this one working on with Xavier Truss here the right guard and watch this boom little stab right there and uh, opens up a nice hole for Milton to get a 10 like a you know eight yard plus gain Here's a simple rep let's go back to that real quick from Marius Mims but nice little turnaround block there hey, you know it doesn't quite hold on long enough but that's a little you know again not too bad or nothing here he is again just kind of bench pressing dudes to the outside here he is up the field we'll take a look at that again here from the backside number 65 in this game and boom there he goes down goes frazier down goes the linebacker on the ground marius mims working a little combo here <laughs> look at that again yeah you're right you can flex up man you deserve to flex up we see this working the combo with trust easy movement skills these guys are getting crushed man and you see more down blocking power opening up monster lanes the dude is just so powerful man mims right there 65 it just this is just not fair man it's not fair <laughs> uh, let's go back to this one again just look at the power in the frame I mean, yeah, maybe keep the feet moving. You can drive him off a little bit more, but I mean, I'm okay with that, man. The dude is just, and eh, get it. At the next level, you're not going to whoop up on dudes as much as, as Amarius Mims is doing right now. This one here, I would have liked to see him get off of these blockers. Like, these guys were set. You could have come off to this linebacker, and that would have allowed a monster hole for your running back. But instead, now Deshaun Ed Edwards has to kind of make a move and, and gets hit as I can't spell summary. Let's get into the summary, though. So let's go ahead and get into the scouting report and my overall breakdown of Amarius Mims. It starts with the elite traits. Like, this dude has immense power. You go back to last year, you know, facing JT2 Amoala, which gave him some, which gave Olu Fashanu some problems. Amarius Mims, while his technique was nowhere near as good as it was last year, or as this year as it was last year, I feel like he's made some big strides with his technique this year. He still held ground versus, versus JT2 Amoala with all the power reps that were thrown against him. And this year, he just, he was impenetrable when it comes to power. You could not beat this guy with power. I did not see anybody bull rush him. So that power in his profile, that clamp strength that he has is elite stuff, man. He's got shut down power. Power! Jeremy Clarkson. And you combine it with that build, he is NFL ready. The size, the length is solid. He's got huge hands. Yes, it's all there, man. And he covers enough ground. You know, his athleticism, I, I wouldn't say, again, it's not elite, but he's got enough athleticism. And you can see him hang up there where I feel comfortable he is a tackle. And I view him as a right tackle. Now, I've heard he can play left tackle. Who knows? But I, I like his athleticism for the right tackle position, projecting him to the next level. So we'll see how that all pans out. But for me, I do view him as a right tackle. And as I talked about, I think he's got enough out of his stance. He's not in a super explosive mover or nothing like that. But once again, solid enough movement skills where with that size and power profile, it's going to play. And then going on to some of his hand stuff in terms of his hand placement, big improvement from last year. I was talking last year, like I thought his hands were real wide or, you know, missed his punches a lot. This year, 
big time improvement. Like his, he uses independent hands a lot better. He kind of understands rushers a lot more. He's seeing the field a lot better, even in the limited snaps. So that tells me that this guy, he, he's got it. He's got it going on here. He's got that mental side. And I think he's going to continue to develop with the limited sample size. And, and his better days are, are ahead of him. Next up, in terms of some of the run blocking stuff that I love, once again, it's the power. I mean, this dude, when he latches onto you at the second level, as he does have enough movement skills to get to the second level, it's over for you, right? You see a lot of pancake blocks with him, some kill shots. He has those on his reps or on his film easily. And then in terms of reach blocking, down blocking, whether you're an inside zone gap system, I think that's really his scheme fit at the next level. Inside zone, gap. Or... You know, I don't think he's a wide zone guy. I really don't. I don't think he's a wide zone guy. I don't know if he has that level of, of foot speed, but overall, I mean, you could try him out and whatnot. I just see him as more of an inside zone, gap heavy type of team. And there's plenty of teams like that out in the NFL. Let's get into some of the cons where I talk about, I don't think he's got elite foot, uh, foot speed. All right. I think he can be a little heavy with his feet at times. And especially when redirecting in space and also when uh, rushers uh, inside counters and stuff like that, a lot of quickness you know, kind of threatening the edge and then moving back to the inside, doing stuff like that. Some more lateral, twitched up defenders are going to give him problems at the next level. Speed uh, is, again, something that I, I think he does a well enough job being able to get rushers around the arc to keep his quarterback clean, but he does have to open up his hips rather than maybe staying more vertical, and it does allow rushers to be able to counter. And like I said, at the next level, that's going to be taken advantage of a lot more. Uh, in terms of the run game, we saw some reps where it was kind of leaning at times, getting off balance. Those are still some things. Not as bad as it was last year, but it is still something we see on film, and it was a reoccurring thing from a game-game perspective where he kind of leaned get too far forward, getting off balance, and uh, losing the reps, and especially at the second level, right? I don't think he's got that redirecting footwork, and as I talk about change of direction type of ability. So my overall projection of Amarius Mims, I have him as a top 10 pick in this class. I view him as a day one starter and elite potential to be a very, very good right tackle in the NFL. And I would 100% say that he is in that tier with Amarius, with um, J.C. Latham, Joe Olt, Olu Fashanu. And I, honestly, I would say Joe Olt, Amer uh, Olu Fashanu are probably in that elite tier. And then right after that, you have J.C. Latham. Amarius Mims in their own tier right there. Like these guys are neck and neck. If Mims had more tape on on film, then who knows? He could be up there too. But and, and Latham's really good. I mean, I think all four of these tackles, this Amarius Mims would be very much in OT1 conversation last year with Paris Johnson for me personally. I put him ahead of Antoine Harrison, who I believe I had at number two last season. I think Amarius Mims, though, is very much in that elite tier tackle conversation. 100 percent I take him top 10. Very good talent. He should not be mocked anywhere outside the top 15 because if he doesn't come out, that's the only way that I don't see him not going in the top 15, obviously. He, to me, is a top 15 pick. Very easily top 10 guy. So that is my view on Amarius Mims. Let me know what you think, agree or disagree. Hope you guys have a really cool day. My name is G-Slang. I'm doing my thing. Keep it cool and I'll talk to you later.